Hi, so this is the, uh, the first part of the human biochemistry unit, which is working out how many calories are in food. Uh, we're going to use joules and kilojoules, because it's the 21st century. So the food that I've chosen to use is pasta. Normally I'd burn peanuts to try and work out how much energy is in it, but peanut fumes are, can cause people to have nasty reactions. There's the data for the pasta, excuse me, pasta. And we'll see if uh, our data comes anywhere close to that. So what I intend to do is burn some of the pasta underneath uh, an aluminium can that's been insulated and there's water in the aluminium can. Now as the pasta burns, it transfers its energy to the water. And if I have a known amount of water, which will be M, and I know the specific heat capacity of water, which is in the data booklet, and I know the temperature change of the water, which I'll get from this thermometer, then I can work out delta H, which is the amount of energy that has been transferred to the water. And assuming 100% transfer of energy from the burning pasta to the water, we can work out uh, our experimental value and compare it to the theoretical value once we've converted calories to kilojoules. So let's uh, mass the calorimeter. All right, that's the mass of the calorimeter. Now let's add some water. So this is the mass of the calorimeter with water in it. So the difference in those two masses is obviously the mass of the water. Let's uh, string up the calorimeter. So I want to measure, I want to measure the temperature of the water. So I'm going to make sure that it, that the thermometer doesn't touch the bottom of the can, but that it's in the water. All right, I just weighed the pasta. It's 1.149 grams. 1.149 grams. All righty. The temperature seems pretty stable. So on with the heating. Notice that I've blocked the top of the uh, calorimeter to stop any evaporation. Okay, it's pretty much done. And let's look at the, uh, at the temperature. Now we need to take the maximum temperature. Wow, I can't believe it went up that high. Now the maximum temperature might not happen the second the experiment's finished. It might happen uh, a, little, a little later. Oh no, so that seems to have been the maximum temperature we had there. 36.7 and a little bit of pasta that's left the little bit of pasta that's left has that mass okay I'm done so the energy released by the pasta can be uh, worked out using MCAT as we call it here there's my raw data, well some of my raw data and the uncertainties, well that's the smallest division that these digital pieces of equipment could measure Okay, so the mass of the water, well that's just the difference, and you have to add the uncertainties in order to get the uncertainty for this mass of the water. Because I subtracted the numbers, that means you have to add the uncertainties. And that's the M in MCAT, the mass of water that you heated. And for the change in temperature, the uncertainties, again, add the uncertainties, and that gives you delta T, the temperature change of what you heated, C is the specific heat capacity of water. That's in the data booklet. So let's do this calculation. The minus, it's exothermic. I put that in there just to remind me it's releasing energy. And it's MC delta T, again, for what you're heating, not the fuel, for what you're heating, which was the water. Checking the unit shows to me that it must be joules. And six, three, and three sig figs, so my answer must have the same amount of sig figs as the... Uh, as the part of the question that had the least amount of sig figs. Experimental value. Well, let's put it in joules per gram. Uh, they can't really have a mole of pasta. It doesn't really help me. 
Now I had a little bit of pasta left unburnt at the end, so I'm going to try and account for that. So the amount of pasta that I did burn is the difference in those two numbers. Again, add the uncertainties. Now I'm going to use a ratio to try and work out the joules per gram for the pasta. And that gives me 5.20 times 10 to the 3. Now one gram, isn't that one sig fig? No, no, no. That's exactly one gram, so that's infinite sig figs. So I'm not going to mess around with my answer anymore. So one gram of pasta produces that much energy. That's my experimental value. Let's check the theoretical value. Well, looking at the packet, 56 grams of pasta gave 200 calories. I'm going to ignore the sig figs here because I don't think Trader Joe's takes any notice of it, to be honest with you. Convert it to joules. And now, once again, let's try and work out the, the joules per gram. So I'll, I'll illuminate the, uh, the method a little bit more this time. So it's cross-multiplication, 56 over 1, and that gives me the correct ratio to work out that 1 gram of pasta gives me that many joules. I'm going to stick with 3 sig figs, uh, just kind of arbitrary. And that's my theoretical value. So in my experiment, I got a lot lower value than that. That was my experimental value. So let's work out my percent error. And that gives me about 65%. And that's a huge error. That's a big error. Now the IB wants me to look at that error and compare it to the uncertainties of my equipment. So here's the equation that we used to work out the experimental value in joules per gram of the pasta. So let me work out the uncertainties. I'm going to carry them through the calculation. That's the terminology the IB uses. Now look at how I'm setting this up. Put the uncertainty over the measured value and then add it to the next uncertainty over the measured value. We're not going to worry about C. That's given in the data booklet without any uncertainties associated with it. And again, the uncertainty over the measured data value. Add them up. People want to multiply them. You don't. You add them. And finally, multiply it by your answer. That gives me plus or minus 94 joules per gram. Now, for uncertainties, you only need one sig fig. So 90 joules per gram. Uncertainties always to one sig fig. If you don't, it's not wrong, but it's not right either. That's my absolute uncertainty. Now I want my percentage uncertainty. So that's just 90 over the value that I measured times 100. So that comes out at about 1.8% plus or minus. Again, one sig fig for my uncertainty. So plus or minus 2%. So my equipment, the limitations of my equipment, are going to mess up my results to a maximum of 2%. But my error was 65%. So what does that mean? So the uncertainties, once again, are from the, the innate nature of the equipment. The percent error, I can't blame it on my equipment. It's got to be something else as well. Perhaps human error, perhaps the procedure wasn't very good. Well, the procedure here is not great. There's incomplete combustion. We saw uh, smoke coming off. The insulation wasn't complete and perfect. And the can also got hot, not just the water. Okay, we're done.